Hey, what's up guys? This is Sohan and you are watching Technical Spark. Couple of viewers are requested me to create video on AD integration so that instead of their manual account, they can log in using their Active Directory account as well as how to configure their roles. So no worries guys, in this video I will cover both the things because I always listen viewers. So without further ado, let's start the video after this small intro. Friends, very first open your Deep Security Manager console and make sure you are logging in admin credential because to configure the AD you require admin privileges. Once you logged in, go directly go to the administration. Under administration, click on the user tab. As you can see, currently I have only single user configured that is Deep Security default user, master admin. And apart from that, I don't have any other users configured. If I go to the roles, then currently I have only two roles. One is auditor and second is full access. And these both the users are provided by Deep Security. So friends, very first we'll see how to configure your Active Directory. But before that, let me show you by logging into the one of the AD user, whether I'm able to log in or not. Since I have only one user account, that is master admin. Sign out. And now I'll log in with my AD account. And with AD password. As you can see, the authentication information you provided was not correct, which means my this user is not exist in the Deep Security Console. Now let me log in with our my actual user account. And once you logged in, again go to the administration and now click on synchronize with Active Directory. Now I'll enter my Active Directory credential that is 192.168.0.95 and my authentication method will be TLS. So it's completely depend on you whether you have a 636 port enable I mean on the LDAPs or TLS access method. So mine is TLS. Let me very first check whether my this port is open or not. For that let's open the command prompt and type command telnet space you are activated server and the port which we have given here 389 and hit enter. As you can see I am successfully able to telnet my activated server. Now let me close this. Let's enter your Active Directory credential here now. Once you enter your Active Directory username and password, then click on Next. Uh oh, I got one error. Unable to connect to the computer on the port number 389. It seems like something wrong with my configuration. So let's check the logs. For that, open your Deep Security Installation Directory, C drive, Program Files, Train Micro. Deep Security Manager and then the log file name would be server 0. This is the one. Let's double click, maximize this, go to the bottom of the page. Unable to connect to the directory. Error initializing TLS. It seems some kind of certificate issue, but let's check more. Error code 52, LDAP error. Now let me again try to connect with a different port like. Uh, LDAPs, next, start TLS, next, now again open our same log file, go to the bottom, maximize this, here is the same error, now let's scroll up, unable to connect to the directory, java.net SSL exception, it looks like to be certificate issue, but I am damn sure. Now let's close this. Now we will directly jump into our Active Directory server. Friends, this is my Active Directory server. Let me show you. CMD IP config. This is our Active Directory server IP address 192.168.0.95 which we are using in our Deep Security Manager to configure the AD. Now very first open IIS. Once IIS is open, expand this. And then on the IIS itself, search for server certificate. Double click on that. And now here we have to uh, create one self signed certificate. In the right side, there's the option create self signed certificate. Friends, in your environment, it may happen that your Deep Security Manager will directly accept your certificate if that is CSI. But in my environment, it looks like to be some issue. So no issues, we'll troubleshoot that. But this is just for your reference. So it may work in your environment or it may not. 
Now let me enter one random name like race certificate. You can do any name here. And in the certificate store, let's choose personal. Now click on OK. My certificate is created. Self signed certificate. Now right click and click on export. Where you want to export the certificate? So I am choosing path on the desktop. And in the name, you can give any random name like AD. Now click on open. So this is the path where my certificate is going to be saved. Give one random password. And please note this password guys. Because while importing the certificate, this password you would very much require. And once you are done, click on OK. Now this IS manager work is done. So we can close this. And this is my certificate which is generated. If I go to the properties, you can see this is a PFX extension. Now let's cancel this and we'll open our certificate manager. For the command is certmgr.msc. Click on that. Perfect. Our certificate manager is window open. Now right click on your trusted root certificate authority. And then click on all task and then import. Current user is selected by default. That is fine. Next, browse the certificate which you have exported in PFX format. So click on browse, desktop. In the file format, select all. Click the certificate which you have exported and then open. Now click on next. Type the same password which is also known as private key which you have entered during the certificate creation. So let me enter that and ignore the below options. Now again click on next. Place all certificate in the following store. Trusted root certificate authority. We are already in trusted root certificate authorities. So click on next and finish. The import was successful. And this is a certificate which you have just imported. Fresh certificate. Okay guys, now close this. Close this uh, CMD as well. Let me open my active directory. Now let's go back to our Deep Security Manager. Okay, now click on next again. Okay, perfect. Now it's able to recognize the certificate. And now server request to accept our certificate. So click on accept. Oh, it's again give some error. Now let's enter our domain name here. Backslash and then click on re-enter the password. And click on next. Perfect guys. Now here we'll have to browse the security group. So for that again go to the Active Directory server. And here we'll create one security group under ID department OU. Right click, new and then group. Click on the make sure that your group type security group is selected. And under group scope make sure global is selected or it could be anything. Now let me give one name like PM users and then click on OK. Double click on the security group. Let me make member to this particular user Sohan Gole. So click on add Sohan check names perfect. It's got added here. Apply. Now meanwhile let me create one more user here. New user train micro. Initials will be PM username train micro. So this will be my login username train micro at the red technicalspark.com. Next, give some password. Password never expires. Next, finish. Our user is created. If I go to the Sohanji, you can see my login name is Sohanji. So I'm going to add these two users into our train micro security group this one so for that let me add one more group one more user that is trained check names and this is my train micro click on ok apply ok perfect now now i'll try to search this particular group in our deep security manager server now search for tm underscore enter here is my group now click on add a similar way guys you can add multiple security group into our your deep security manager now let me again click on next 
now guys once you configure your active directory then here you are getting two options one is whenever any new member is added to that your security group that is tm underscore user which permission you want to assign like auditor or full access so these are the role so make sure you have appropriate group let's say you have configured one group like tm underscore read only so you will have to configure one role here in this particular segment so that whenever any user will get added to that particular role it will automatically be assigned that particular permission so let for now i am going to providing full access so my both the users one is train micro and sohanji will get full access because they are part of our tm underscore users group similarly if you want to allow permission basis on the context then you can configure that also but right now i am going with this first option click on next perfect add two new users train micro and sohanji with full access permissions now click on finish now guys make sure you configure this schedule task okay so that your deep security manager will automatically check for any changes applied or done on your active directory security groups so whether one of the user is added or removed so accordingly deep security manager will update their user list in deep security console based on changes done at active directory so i have selected this checkbox now let me click on close okay the new previous wizard is closed and new wizard is open meanwhile if i you know check at the back side then i can see two users are added here under the full access now let's uh, set up the ad synchronization so uh, here i'm going to select hourly next in hourly by default 20 is selected but i'm going to select here 50 minutes so that every 50 minutes your deep security manager will try to update security group users click on next do you want to enable the task Ad for ad synchronization yes now click on finish now you have successfully configured your active directory with your deep security console and these are the two users which is automatically added here now let me go to the schedule task you can see hourly synchronized users this task is automatically configured here with a 50 minutes of synchronization time you can change this time at any point in time like whether it could be 30 minutes or daily weekly monthly or only once so you have full control of your ad synchronization task now for now let cancel users but before i go jump into the roles let me show you where, whether i am able to log in with my activity users or not sign out I will log in with our activity users. Sign in. I am able to log in. Now let me sign out again. And I will log in using train micro user. Sign in. Perfect. My all the users are working perfectly. Now let me show you how you can configure the roles. Go to the users management and then roles. Now click on new role. Very first provide one role that is read only. Allow access to deep security manager user interface that is fine. I don't want to provide other access in the general tab to the read only users. So this is the only access which I am going to allow. Now go to the computer rights. Guys under the computer rights all the users which has the your read only role will be able to view all the machines as per the default policy but if you want you can provide the permission like edit delete so these are the options you have as well as which computer those users can see so you know when you select selected computer you have option to manually tick mark those machines but right now i am providing access to all computers now if you scroll down here are the some few more options allow new computers to be created in selected group so do you want to provide this permission to your read only role so my answer is no but yeah you can play around with this option as per your requirement now let's go to the policy in policy i just want my users to view the policy then again which policy all policy or selected policy when you click on selected policy then you can select only those policies which you want that particular your deep security user to be viewed so for now i am selecting spark server and now our user will only be able to see this particular policy only and the rest of the policy will be gone 
it won't be visible to that user. Allow viewing of non-selected policies. Allow new policy to be created. Then no, because this is just a read only. User API key and rights. For user, nothing is required, so we can leave this blank. Other rights. What are the permission you want to provide your this read only user? So currently, multi-tenant and other things are hide by default, and rest of the things are in view only mode. So I guess this is completely fine. But yeah, let me make some changes in the alerts. So here I'll give the full permission as well as alert configuration also full permission. And I don't think that other things are required. Okay, in the license also full permission we can provide updates full permission certificate okay relay management or uh, these permissions are not required okay that is fine now go to the assign to right now this role is not assigned to any of the users that's why it's showing no users and once you're done with all the configuration as per your requirement click on ok see my role is created now go to the users and for now uh, currently i'm logged in with my train micro let me show you whether i'm able to see all the policies or not Yes, I can very much see all the policies. Now we'll change the permission of the same user, which is train micro. This one so for that double click and in the role, I'm going to change from full access to read only. Once you select that, click on save. But yeah, guys, additionally, if you want, you can fill the contact information also for this user. Now let me click on save permission denied. Why? Because my role is changed and I am no more administrator. Policies. Again, let me go back. I guess I need to sign out. I have successfully signed out. Enter your train micro user credential and click on sign in. Very much go to the computers. See, I am able to view all the uh, computers which is available here. If I double click, then I don't have to edit or modify policy. All the things are grayed out. In policy configuration, also, I can't do anything. Now let me close this. Go to the policies. In policies, I can only see the policy which I have allowed. That is Spark server. In administration also, only licensing details are available as well as the updates. Now friends, I hope you have understood how to integrate your Active Directory with Deep Security Manager for the AD authentication as well as role configuration. So please test this scenario in your production or test lab and get back to me whether it's working or not. If in case you still have any question query, then please feel free to let me know in the comment box below. I'll be very happy to help you. And guys, a very important announcement. If you want me to implement your Deep Security Manager environment, then please feel free to mail me in on my email ID. My email ID is available in my YouTube channel about section. And once you mail me with your requirement, then you can expect my reply within 24 hours. So guys, that's it in this video. If you found this video useful, then please click on the like button and don't forget to share and subscribe. This is Sohan signing out. I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.